In this mode of log post, I get to take a quick test ride on Royal Enfield's new Scram 411. I saw on Triumph of San Diego's Facebook page that the Royal Enfield Demo Tour was going to be offering rides on their latest motorcycles. I've been interested in what Royal Enfield has to offer ever since they came out with their Himalayan and Interceptor models. At the demo ride, riders could sign up to ride the Himalayan Scram 411, the Interceptor 650, the Meteor 350, or the Classic 350. I chose to ride the Scram 411. It's a scrambler based on Royal Enfield's Himalayan adventure bike. The demo was nicely organized with rides heading out every 30 minutes. If you had time, you could sign up to go on multiple rides, testing out all the different motorcycles they had to offer. There were several riders doing just that. I couldn't spend too much time out there, so I just stuck with the scrambler. The Royal Enfield USA team is based in Milwaukee, so I'm pretty sure they were enjoying the weather San Diego had to offer on a Saturday in November. Now I usually never ride in a group. When I ride, I'm kind of like Pee Wee. I'm a loner, Dottie, a rebel. I would have loved the chance to take a solo ride so I could really focus on the bike instead of making sure that I didn't fall too far behind or concentrating on my lane position as to not cause any chaos in the group. But hey, I had the opportunity to ride a brand new motorcycle, so no complaints here. Let's talk about this scrambler. It has a single-cylinder, four-stroke, air-cooled, fuel-injected engine. And you know what? It rode and revved pretty smooth. Its displacement is 411cc, which I'm not certain, but I would make an educated guess that's where the name 411 came from. Now, it's not going to knock your socks off with 24.3 horsepower and 23.6 foot-pounds of torque. But you know what? It's not trying to knock your socks off, because that's not what this motorcycle is about. That being said, it had no problem running at highway speeds. Just don't expect to break any drag racing records. But like I said, that's not what this is for. I'm 5'9", with about a 30 inch inseam, and the bike felt very comfortable. The seat had nice cushion for my rear, the handlebars were in a nice upright position and my feet made their way to the foot pegs very naturally. The whole riding position felt very natural. This area of San Diego had a lot of potholed roads and the suspension of the scrambler fared really nicely on them. The front forks are 41 millimeter and offer 190 millimeters of travel. The rear has a monoshock that gave 180 millimeters of travel. Riding over the bumps felt pretty comfortable. My spine had zero complaints. On a side note, the route took us past the place where I got my last tattoo. Portside Tattoo is the name of the shop, and if you're looking for a good place, I would recommend them. I wonder if people living in this neighborhood got tired of having a group of 15 motorcycles come riding along every 30 minutes. The stock exhausts on all of these bikes are pretty polite, so I'm guessing not. If I had lived there, I really would have thought it was a cool sight to see.
Hey, look at that. Is that a Chrysler LeBaron? From here it looks mint. I love the way Southern California weather preserves cars. Anyway, let's get back to the bike. The Scrambler handled well and felt nice and light. Dry, it weighs just over 400 pounds, which is about what one would guess. The front wheel is 19 inches, which is 2 inches smaller than the Himalayans. That means it can turn in a bit quicker. There's a single front brake disc up front, and it felt pretty good. The brakes are by Brie. That actually stands for by Brembo. According to Brembo's website, this is their brand for small to medium motorcycles and scooters. So when you consider that, it's not surprising how good the brakes felt. Also, the Scrambler comes with ABS, which I believe all new motorcycles are required to come with nowadays. The finish was nice. I rode the white flame scheme. That's only one of seven color combos you can get. SRP on the Scrambler is $5,099, which seems to me like a screaming deal for a brand new motorcycle. What's more is that Royal Enfield has a three-year warranty on these bikes. That definitely seems to me that the company has a lot of confidence in their line. To anyone who is unsure about the quality and reliability of these, I'd suggest checking out both the Itchy Boots and Karmakaze Moto YouTube channels. Both of those channels feature a Royal Enfield Himalayan. Karmakaze Moto purchased his bike in the state of Washington and rode it all the way to his home in Alaska. Later on, he used it to reach Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. Itchy Boots rode a Himalayan through Iran, Asia, Turkey, and a large part of South America. Even though I was only able to ride the motorcycle for about 30 minutes, I really did enjoy the Scrambler. I'd recommend it to anybody as a very easy motorcycle to ride. As long as you're not wanting or needing breakneck acceleration, this bike is going to do everything you need it to. A big thanks to the Royal Enfield team as well as Triumph of San Diego for the opportunity to give the Scrambler a go. I'd love the opportunity to do a long-term test on the Scram 411, so if anybody at the official offices of Royal Enfield are watching, hit me up. Hey, a guy can dream, right?